What's going on? Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to the Hot Cakes Podcast. I am your host, Kid Bagheera. This is Cake 12, KD. We about to get straight to it. I'm about to go in. I'm about to pour up. I got me a little snack because it's going to fuck down. And I already know that I'm going to be wilding for respect with half the shit I'm going to say. But it's all good. Like, I'm not even going to trip. You know what I'm saying? So, pouring up real quick. And like I said, we're going to get to it. So, don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? So, we're going we, to... And, and, and I'm going to go back to the beginning and lead up to all this shit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, first and foremost, congratulations to Ant-Man for finally getting out the first round. Uh... What is this? His third or fourth year? So it's it's really not. It ain't really took him that long, but to a degree, it's like you that nigga. So you you should have been making a play. He was making a play, but you should have been getting out the first round because you that nigga. So we gonna excuse all that, and we gonna give him his flowers and celebrate him. So congratulations on getting out the first round. I think they do got a legit shot of getting to the Western Conference Finals, possibly the finals. <sighs> the West outside of Denver is very weak. And what I mean and what I mean by weak is like there's no veterans. It's just young niggas versus young niggas. You know what I'm saying? And while everybody was picking Minnesota and OKC, I was just like, like, do they do they know how to win? Like, you going to put money on that? You sure? You can count on that? And what I mean by that is because they, everybody want to make me, make it seem as if I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So then when I brought up last year with the Kings and the Warriors, the Kings didn't know how to win. That's why the Warriors was able to win game seven. But you see this time around, the Kings won. They learned from last year. So now they know how to win. You know what I'm saying? In that situation with the older team, with the younger team, you know what I'm saying? Them not making the playoffs is aside the point. They know how to win now and they're ready. You know what I'm saying? They probably will never win a championship, but that's that part of it is aside the point. The point is, is OKC and Minnesota, y'all pick everybody picking, are they ready to win? You know what I'm saying? Now, outside of Denver, I don't really see a veteran team. Now, obviously, Phoenix is a veteran team. However, they had one problem. And if that one problem wasn't on the team, I don't think they would have got swept. I truly don't. So, we'll get to all of that. Like I said, we're going to go back to the beginning. Because at this point, KD just needs to retire. He is no doubt one of the greatest. I don't... For some people, he probably probably is on Mount Rushmore. For me, he's not. Um, he's just not. He's on his fourth team, possibly about to be on his fifth team. I don't know what his contract situation is. Don't really care. Um, Phoenix front office has done a horrendous job since they got to the finals. They haven't even been close since then and i really thought they was going to run it back after that first one to go back and get it so again phoenix has done a horrific job but i'll get to all of that like i said i'm going back to the beginning because this is about katie but i will speak on other things that's got to do with him now this motherfucker came in the gate came came in the door out the gate putting up numbers Phenomenal score, phenomenal baller. And I'm just speaking from a, a hooping standpoint, right? Fuck the rings, fuck the legacy and all of that for right now. So came in the door, out the gate, giving niggas that work, right? Cool. Then they finally put it together. They got the squad. Y'all already know who they are. And it's him... Westbrook and Serge. That draft, they get hard. They finally make the playoffs. Cool. Get knocked out in the first round to none other than Kobe, Gasol, and the Lakers, right? Rightfully so, as the young team, right? A lot of niggas said if they would have drafted Tyreek, they would have beat the Lakers. So it's like, hmm, you might be right with that. You might be right. When you look at both their careers, right? 
you can't really say Reek didn't have that opportunity, right? Because he was starting out the gate and he was the rookie of the year, right? So I, I'm assuming injuries may have riddled Reek's legacy and, and career, but I'm not too, too sure. But I know he did play with Boogie and they never made the playoffs. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, they may have made it one time. I'm not sure. But hey, he had his opportunity. So it is what it is, right? Cool. So with Thunder, boom. First year they made the playoffs, first round exit. No shame in that. Cool. Second year they made the playoffs, second round exit. Okay, so you made a step up. You could see the potential. You could see the growth. Cool. Third year, they make third round of the playoffs, third round exit. Cool, right? You see the progression which I have never seen this progression with any other team throughout history. Like I would really have to go back and research, but in recent memory, I've never seen a team do this shit. Now, fourth year, they make the fourth round of the playoffs. Fourth round exit. Cool. They never had the chance to do year five to see what would have happened. Now, it's Harden's fault they lost the finals because he didn't show up. Now, imagine he show up, what would happen? Or you could even play devil's advocate. Imagine they would have drafted Tyreek, what would have happened, right? But we're going to leave Tyreek out of it because it is what it is with those four, right? Cool. Harden didn't show up, and he never shows up in big moments, which is why he doesn't have a ring, right? Cool. But how the Thunder's tenure continued when he left, you could tell they missed him. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, he missed him too. Yes, he made two Western Conference Finals, I believe. But who cares? And later on, you still teamed up with both of them. One came to you and you went to the other. So, and you're with the other one now. So, that already tell you, you should have never left, right? Now, everyone has this whole money versus championships, this, this, and this, right? I get it from both sides, but I'm with the championship side, right? Now, for me, the uh, only one that's really in that conversation about championships and money to me is KD. Because we know he making buku off the court, right? But the other two did as well. Serge was probably the only one that wasn't really doing nothing off the court that we don't know about, right? So as you look at it, Serge should make the most on the floor while the rest of them should take less because they're going to get money off the floor, right? Cool. But nobody look at it like that, right? But y'all wonder why the GOAT is the GOAT because of that. And I'm going to get to that. So just hold tight. Hold on. Now, the year they lose the finals, that's the fourth year, right? The fourth year of them together, they done boom, 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 boom every year, right? These niggas literally could have been the Warriors before the Warriors. As an organization, you get 50% of the blame and the four players get 50% of the blame. However, I will excuse Serge from this because like I said, he's getting the less or the least off the court, which means he deserves the max on the floor. Now, remember, when the Three Stooges came together, what did they do? Wade and LeBron took the least, which is only $4 million, but okay, to give Chris Bosh the most, right? So they both took 106 and Bosh got 110. Why? Because they was making more of the court. Now, we, even though with those three contracts, there was only a $4 million difference, I'm pretty sure that allowed them more cap space to go get all the rest of the pieces that helped them win those two back to back, right? Which just so happened to be one against who? The Thunder. Now, I say that to say, again, KD and Westbrook at the time was getting money off the floor. Harden, he may have not started seeing money off the floor until he went to Houston, right? So, let's say KD and Russ say, okay, restructure our contracts, give the money that Harden is seeking so we can 
tighten this thing up, keep it together, let's go. You're getting money off the floor. And at the end of the day, if you don't live outside your means, it's not even going to matter. I don't want to hear nothing about generational wealth and this, this, and this, because it really ain't that much in the grand scheme of things. To my knowledge, I think Harden left over $15 million, I think, right? It, and then I found out it may have been even less than that. So Katie and Westbrook, bro, y'all could have easily gave that shit back. Because as we see now, any money you left out then, you done got back. The shit just keep going up. We are maybe three to five years removed from where a max contract going to be half a million dollars. Half a million. Half, half a billion dollars. Excuse me. Let that sink in. Ant-Man... I'm trying to think who else. You got Ant Man, Shy. Who else? Oh, Tyler in Indiana. I'm trying to think who else. Them three possibly make it a max for half a million dollars within the next three to five. So. All of these OKC players' legacy has been ruined over 15. How in the fuck does that make sense? When Westbrook and KD could have easily said, all right, bet. We're going to give up 7-5 a piece. We'll get it back on the back end. Something. Something because at the end of the day, like, I know me personally, like, I have a tendency to put trust in people and you shouldn't like i expect people to do the right thing and they not and that's cool however as an organization my two superstars gave back money to keep a player that they know they need and then we we went four championships in six seven years hmm as as the owner as a multi-billion billionaire owner I'm not gonna give him that seven five back and more. Some kind of way, some kind of way to figure it out. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. You get what I'm saying? So Russ and KD, that's what they was should have did. Or they could have left it like it was, and they could have just paid hard in them fucking sales. Like who? Oh, the goal. Hmm. Jordan. Didn't he pay pimping? Oh, okay. How many did they win? Oh, okay. Now I know he wasn't doing that from the jump in the in the early ones, but when it came down to it, he still did it to secure that what? So what are we talking about? The blueprint was already laid out. It can't be about all this. It can't be. Because when it come down to it, when we talk in that conversation, you're not even in it. Because what happens next? Harden leaves, go to Houston, becomes this big superstar. I don't even know why. Like, I mean, the nigga was making 25 three throws a game. You put anybody on the free throw line that many times, of course they're going to average 40, 50, whatever it was. Nigga wasn't even really getting fouled like that. But okay, go off refs, whatever. Whatever. KD leaves, go to Golden State, wins two back to back, almost a third. But them boys started getting hurt. <laughs> the devil was coming for them goddamn repayments and was taking body parts as payment. All them niggas broke down. But that's aside the point. Them two rings don't mean shit, which is part of why part of why why he left. Let me say that one again. Them two rings don't mean shit. Them two finals MVPs don't mean shit. That's why the fuck he left. He know them shits don't count. That's why the fuck he was in his basement. Well, now nah, he wasn't in his basement, but whoever... Everybody who was talking shit was in their parents' basement while this nigga was in his mansion. He making burner counts and shit. Because he knew. He knew them rings didn't mean shit. So now he trying to search and create his own thing. 
Nigga, how in the fuck do you go to the team that you just had 3-1 and they came back and beat you, go lose, and you join them? Let me explain something. If a nigga want to leave, he want to leave. Now, me personally, if I'm that nigga, if I if I know I'm going to be that nigga, I want to stay with one team. I want to put on one jersey. That's just me. And if niggas want to play for 12 teams, that's on them. Have at it, whatever. But if you was going to leave, why didn't you make a smarter decision where your legacy would have been forever? Now, I'm going to throw out one team. And really, can't nobody say none. If he would have went to the Knicks when Melo was still there, brought the Knicks back and got the Knicks a championship, that all he would have had to do was win one. One championship, one finals MVP would have meant more than them two back-to-back -back and that third appearance. Notice, he ain't even been back to the finals since. That's not a coincidence. Had he went to the Knicks with Melo and won, all he would have to do was win one. That one in New York, that one in the Mecca, bringing the Knicks back? Nigga, what? That shit would have meant more than anything. And nine times out of ten, he'd still be there. Kyrie would have came, They would he and Kyrie would have fucked it up and all of that, and that's cool. But the love he would have got in New York? That shit is unmatched. That shit would have been unmatched. He got no love in California. They like, nigga, we was winning before you got here. So what? Draymond said that shit in the middle of a game. So that already lets you know. They just, you know what I'm saying? And and and, and really, he should have never even went. The Warriors should have never even went after him. Because the first two are a wash. Niggas was hurt in the first one. He got suspended in the second one. Run that shit back and see what's what. But you want to go cheat and get this nigga. Okay, that's cool. So for the Warriors as well, them two don't mean shit either. It only means a little something because y'all had won and went before he got there. And y'all won after him. So that, so yeah. But them two in the middle, them shits don't mean nothing. That's why y'all ain't get the three-peat. So y'all really not even amongst the greatest teams of all time. Like y'all at the bottom of the list. Y'all can't go above nobody. Like... Y'all don't have a three-peat. And that 73-9, and nine, that don't mean shit because y'all didn't win the championship that year. So, like, the GOAT said, 73-9 and nine don't mean shit. It's still 72-10. and 10. But anyway, this ain't about that. This ain't about them. So, he should have went to the Knicks. Now, I'm sure there were other teams he could have went to that would have been cool. He could have went, like I said, he could have went to 28 different teams. He could have went to any of the 28. It wouldn't even fucking matter. He couldn't. He wanted to leave. And he, he couldn't go to go to state, dog. You just had them down 3-1. And you let them come back on your watch. And you go join them. Everybody take an L on their resume for that shit. Everybody take a hit on their legacy for that shit. Because that shit is unacceptable. You know what I'm saying? Like that. What the fuck? So, with that being said... That's why he's still chasing and still trying to figure shit out. So, USA team, this, this, and that. And the USA team is where niggas get together and be like, all right, we're going to team up. Hence the Three Stooges in Miami. Cool. Now you got these niggas in Brooklyn trying to do it. <laughs> why would anybody mortgage their future on Kyrie, bro? Now, they were supposed to go to the Knicks, but the Knicks like, nah, we're not fucking with Kyrie. And you can't blame them. But at the time, the Knicks didn't have no team. So it's like you get them to somehow you get Harden for all your picks. That's cool. Whatever. I'm sure Melo would have came back on like a little vet deal or whatever. That's cool. You would have got some other players. It may have worked. It may have. But Brooklyn had a team. They had just made the playoffs with D'Lo. And D'Lo really ain't did shit since he left Brooklyn either. But... That's beside the point. We ain't, we ain't on that. But I'm speaking to just the leader or lack thereof leader in KD and Kyrie because they didn't do shit in Brooklyn. 
Like, how do you fumble that shit? They fumbled the fuck out of that shit. And then they thought Ben was going to help them. <laughs> Whew, let me take a drink on that. Because why the fuck would anybody think Ben going to help them? Oh, man. Ben Simmons can't help his damn self. He can't. By the way, y'all tried those uh, Doritos Fiery Mango. They hidden. They brand new. You probably only find them at Walmart. They super exclusive. I've been to three Walmarts and only found them in one. It took me three Walmarts to find them. So, but if you can find them, get them and definitely eat them with some salsa because that shit is hidden. It's hitting, all right? You heard it here first. So, now, after Brooklyn doesn't work, what was he there, like four years? What do he do? Second round... Because he was hurt a whole year. So his first year, he didn't even play. Okay, that's cool. I'm thinking the second year, when they was all together, because Harden was there. And, uh, yeah, it was something I wanted to mention about his current team that happened with his former team. I'm going to get to that. But anyway, so his first year, he was out. Second year, uh, second round exit to Giannis. Now, there was controversy. Was his foot on the line? This, 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 and that. But I think what Harden got hurt and Kyrie got hurt that series, right? When they put Boston out in the first round. Yeah, something crazy like that. But anyway, the third year, I can't remember. Was that, that was, oh, his third year, they got swept, right? They got put out in the first round and he didn't really show up, right? Kyrie only surviving off water, giving them niggas that work, and he wasn't really showing up. So he was already over it, right? Cool. And was Harden already gone? I'm not I'm not really sure. I can't remember because that shit was just a whole disaster, right? So, no, Hart. Wait. Yeah, Harden was gone. Harden was in Philly. Yeah, that's right. Because they had been on the sideline. Side like, niggas, you going to play or what? What you going to do, right? Right. Okay. Cool. So, uh, so after that, then he's like, "Yeah, no, I, I, I can't do nothing with this because Ben's clearly not gonna play. So, what's the point, right? Cool. So, um, get to his new destination, which is Phoenix. Now, him, Bill, Book. That's nasty. I, I can't lie. It's nasty, right? But you got three injury-prone players. How in the fuck is that shit going to work? And as Phoenix, as an organization, I'm not giving up Miles Bridges. You know what I'm saying? The best ability is availability. This motherfucker hasn't missed a game. Why are you giving that up? Ain't no fucking way. Ain't no fucking way I'm giving that up. And the nigga play defense? Boy, stop. Boy, fucking stop. So... This is solely the reason why Phoenix just got swept. Grayson Allen. And it's simply because he played under Coach K. If you don't believe in the Duke curse, which I will make a whole episode about, go look it up. If your favorite player slash team has not won a championship within the last 25 years, Go look on the roster and see if there was a Duke player on there. And that's the reason why. You can go through history and look at certain teams and be like, why the fuck they didn't win? Go look at that roster. And if there's a Duke player on that roster, that's why. I'll give you a few examples if you think I'm just blowing smoke. I want to say 2009. Remember when Kobe and LeBron had them little puppets? And you remember the Nuggets and the Magic was giving both them niggas that work as a team? And who be who? The 
the Magic fucked around and beat the Cavs. But the Nuggets lost that shit in the last seconds. They There was no way they could beat the Lakers. Now, why is that? One way or the other, one was going to win, one was going to lose. Both teams had one thing in common. Duke players. J.J. Redick on the Magic. Dante Jones on the Nuggets. Now, what was the key moment in that Western Conference Finals? Fourth quarter, maybe a little over a minute, a little under a minute. Anthony Carter throws in the ball. Ariza steals it. Game over. In Denver. Mind you, every fucking game Denver was up. Every fucking game Denver was up. And yet, the leads just went away. They got reduced to rubble. It was a wrap. Because of Dante Jones. Now, the Magic fucked around and beat the Cavs. That's cool. But it was only room for one Duke team to get there, right? Which is why the Lakers won. And then the Lakers destroyed the fucking Magic 4-1. There you go. So that's that's two examples. Let me give you another one. Let me see. Who else? Oh, recently. Steph's fourth ring against who? Hmm. The Celtics. Tatum. Yeah. Now, just because you have a Duke player on your team does not mean you can't get to the finals. I just gave an example of Orlando. And I'm just giving you another example of the Celtics. Boom. Now, here's the, oh, here's another team. And this is for real basketball fans. You wonder why Darren Williams never broke through? His partner in crime, Carlos Boozer. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you wonder why Derrick Rose never broke through and broke the fuck down? He had not one, not two, but three on his fucking team. Luol Deng, Carlos Boozer, and Mike Dunleavy, if I'm not mistaken. There was no fucking way he could do anything with that shit. Now, for all y'all saying, oh, it's a coincidence, or what the fuck you talking about, this, this, and that. This is what the Duke curse is. Notice there are no superstars from Duke. You got one in Tatum. Kyrie don't play enough for me to say he's a superstar. But I'll give you Tatum. These niggas, these niggas' game do not translate to the NBA, bro. It just don't. Look at Zion. Has he even played a 65-game season yet? I don't think so. And if he has, okay, congratulations. But the Pelicans ain't going nowhere. They got two of them. Now, look at the Lakers. They about to get the fuck up out of here. And Cam Reddish ain't even fucking playing. But he's on that fucking team. And the star power of LeBron is really going down at this point. So he can no longer overcome that shit. But he did. Now, let me explain the Duke curse real quick and then I'll, you know. So the Duke curse is any player who has played under Coach K, they do not win championships. Something is going to happen. Either someone's going to get hurt or something crazy is going to happen that's like, what the fuck? And it's just going to destroy the entire series. Now, I believe there are four Duke players that have championships. Danny Ferry, that was on the Spurs in 2007. And obviously there was a tremendous amount of star it was a tremendous amount of star power. You had Duncan, Ginobili, Parker, Bowen, and, you know, one of the greatest coaches orchestrating the whole shit, and Greg, Pop Greg Popovich. Now, that's why they won. Then you got Shane Battier, who won the two with the Three Stooges. And then you got, and, and mind you, both of those finals they won, Bosch got hurt in one of them. In like this in the series run, in the playoff run, Bosch got hurt in one, Wade got hurt in one, like shit was happening, but at the time LeBron was just too much 
So it was able to overcome. And that's the thing with the shit. Like, it can be overcame, but you have to have so much. So, like I said, the Spurs was just too much. They overcame. LeBron and whichever other one wasn't hurt, they was able to overcome. You know what I'm saying? And then the fourth player, the third and fourth player would be Kyrie and Dante Jones. Which, again, you have the... Uh, you have LeBron, and then you also had the league and the refs operating with that and getting Draymond suspended. So there you have it. Four Duke players of all time, right? That's pretty bad. And then you have, uh, like, one superstar, right? So if y'all want to say Grant was a superstar, like, I I'm not going to argue with that. My only thing would be, is like, how much did he really play, though? You know what I mean? Um, you got, you like, anyone could be a star slash all star, but when we talking about superstar, and that's like that Tatum commercial I'll be seeing where he be talking about generational talent, I'm just kind of like, I don't know about all that, my boy. Like, if you went to Kansas, I'd be riding with you, but like, I don't really see you winning no rings, bro. And that's solely because you went to Duke. You didn't go to Duke, Tatum be my favorite fucking player. But I just know I've seen what the Duke curse has done to teams. It has destroyed teams. Like, it's, it's fucking fact. Go back and look, and you could try to fact check me, but it's not going to work. The facts is there. I just gave y'all examples. Hence why KD has gotten swept. Two of the last three series he's been in. He got swept in Brooklyn. His last year in Brooklyn, he got swept. Now, if this is his last year in Phoenix, he's going to get, he just got swept. So, yeah, sure, there's a, a handful of teams or a lot of teams that'll take him right now. Like, I wouldn't trade for him. I'm not giving up nothing. Like, he's on his last legs anyway. I'm not saying he still can't play at a high level, but at this point, whatever he's searching for, I don't think he'll find it. Like, could he go to the Knicks and win? Sure. But I don't know. I think I think because they got a good shot to win this year. Like, it's so wide open. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no clear favorite outside of the Nuggets. Like, Milwaukee is breaking the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? And the Knicks are playing very fucking well. Like, if you pick in Boston, like, you might well stop. If you didn't know about the Duke curse, you know about it now. So... There's not much star power on the Celtics to overcome it. So even if they go, they'll just lose again. Um, so again, you know, hey, I don't know. Now, um, there is the Magic player. His last name starts with a P, I believe. I don't know his name. And I think he's the last of the Coach K era, if I'm not mistaken. So do player that come under him, they should be safe. But I'm not sure because if the coach of Duke now was on Coach K staff, it's going to be the same shit. So it'll probably still keep going. But, um, I mean, you see they, they both tied 2-2 right now. But, I mean, no one's worried about the Cavs or the Magic. They're not going to do anything. But, uh, yeah. So that's that with that with, with all the Duke shit or whatever. But Grayson Allen is the reason why they just got swept. And if... KD does want to stay in Phoenix. He needs to get Grayson Allen up out of there. And they don't need to have any Duke players. And they really just need to coast during the year. Like, obviously, stay between four and six. So you don't have to worry about the play-in. But you don't need to be trying to worry about number one seed and all that. Because the three of y'all together, healthy, can destroy anyone. And it's not even going to matter where y'all at. They ain't going to see y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, at the end of the day, KD does still have championship pedigree. He has been to four finals, no matter what. Book has been to one. So, and some of the other players have been on some or this, that, and the third, whatever. So, it can be done. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it can be done. So, at the end of the day, that's an option. Like I said, he, he can go to the Knicks. But for me, at this point, just retire, bro, because it's over with. Like, whatever it is you're searching for, you're not going to find it at this point. Like, you're in the last 
you're in the last days at this point. You know what I'm saying? And you've ruined good years of your career with the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, just going from team to team to team. Like, bro, what are you doing? It was no need for that. You're not that kind of player to, that has to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not a James Posey. Like, that nigga won two rings back to back with two different teams. I really thought he was going to win a third with the, um, with the Hornets. You know what I'm saying? At that time. I really did. So it's like, nigga, you, you, you ain't got to do all that, bro. You really could have just stayed and go to state. Like, what the fuck did you expect? You went to another nigga team. Why the fuck would you think you're supposed to get Deshaun? Who gives a fuck about the finals MVP? I don't think he should have got both of them. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. He hit the shot. That first one, okay, fine. But that second one, I, I ain't think that was his. I thought that was Steph's. You know what I'm saying? Like, they done robbed that nigga out of two. Like, why the... F I, I, I don't even know why Iguodala, it, it, Iggy got the first one. I don't. Iguodala, if you didn't think I could say it. But I don't even know why he got the first one. I really don't. You know what I mean? Like, they was just really hating on stuff. You know what I'm saying? And clearly, the, the third one they was as well. You know what I'm saying? So they had no choice but to fucking give it to them. But they would have they would have tried to do some, do some dumb shit and give it to the pool. They would have, but, you know. At this point, KD just retired, bro, because it's over with. You're one of the greatest scorers of all. No, I ain't even going to say scores. I, well, I am going to say that. You're one of the greatest players of all time. You're not on Mount Rushmore. You are a top 75 player. No one has an issue with you being on that list. And you are one of the greatest scorers, like just straight bucket getter. Like you're virtually unstoppable to guard. Um, this may be easier said than done, but, you know, you can't block his shot. You know what I'm saying? So why not just try to steal the ball before he can shoot? But. Again, that may be a lot easier said than done, but <laughs> regardless, um, you're solidified. You know what I'm saying? You are two-time champion, two-time back-to-back finals MVP. You're MVP of the league. No one can take any of that from you. However, most of that shit, well, not most, but some of that shit it's tarnished. You know what I'm saying? Like, them two rings don't mean shit, and you know it. And that's why he's been doing what he's been doing to try to get that one without, you know, but it's like, you should have never went there in the first place. You just had them down 3-1. You go to the Knicks, you keep LeBron from going to the finals? Nigga, what? Even if he didn't go to the Knicks, he went. He could have went to Philly. He could have went to, bro, he could have went to any team in the East. He could have went to any other team in the West. It, it really didn't even fucking matter. You know what I'm saying? But, bro, you went to the team, you was down 3-1? I mean, you had down 3-1 and you let them come back and win? And you go join them? That is the weakest shit ever on both ends. On both fucking ends. Go to State, take just as much heat as allowing you to come as you went there. So that's on both of y'all, not just them. But nah, dog. Just go ahead and retire, bro. It's over with. Because Ant-Man ain't going nowhere. And he gonna be waiting on your ass next year. So just go ahead and retire, bro. I'm gonna take one last drink on that. And that is that. <laughs>